left the 12 days of Christmas. So this Christmas being COVID and we don't know if we can either even gather or what have you. So what I decided to do, I did this last Easter during COVID as well. I'm making like, um, not goodie bags, but like uh, baskets or boxes for my family with their favorite baking and cookies and stuff in them. So cake last week and I've been soaking them in Grand Marnier. And so what I'm doing is, you can see it's a loaf pan, but I cut it in half because not everybody likes fruit cake. I happen to love it. So each family will get a half. So Deanne, Jesse, Curtis, me and Richard. And then this is the sample one that Richard's been tasting. It is so good, you guys. Oh my goodness. So I'll just get these out of all the stack in here. So that, for example, will be going in the box with, it'll be wrapped in cheese cloth with a ribbon around it, you know, trying to make it more Christmassy. And then maybe I'll throw in some candy canes or what have you, just to, and then we'll drop it off. They sure enjoy that at Easter time. But the person who misses out on the baking is Turner because he's gluten-free. So I thought, what easy cookie could I make that he can also have? So I went to my old fashioned Betty Crocker cookbook and found thumbprint cookies. So I don't have any shortening, so I'm just doing half a cup of butter instead of a quarter cup. And then the brown sugar, one egg separated, vanilla. Here I'll put in gluten-free flour and salt. And so they're pretty basic. So the chance of them not turning out is pretty slim. So today we're using Bob's Red Mill gluten-free flour, one to one. So it just means you just treat it like normal flour. My favorite flour is Robin Hood gluten-free, but it's always sold out. So I've got my butter, sugar, and vanilla in here. So we're gonna get them just whirring about. I gotta show you guys my Christmas measuring cups I got from Anthropology in the sale room. I just used that one, that's what it said. But aren't they cute? I got them after Christmas last year because you guys know how much I love, love, love collecting ceramic measuring cups. They're over here. And my newest one is this mason jar one where it all separates into measuring cups. I just love them, I don't know why. I think they're just simply charming. So. I'm gonna get this beat up and then I'm going to just add one cup of flour to this. My flour, my gluten-free flour. And the reason I do the gluten-free cookie before I do the regular one is because I don't have to wash out the measuring cup for the regular flour because it's not bothering anybody, right? And this recipe is great because we only Oopsie, we only had three eggs. So this recipe only takes one egg for that. So it's not that difficult. You're supposed to add nuts to it, but we don't eat nuts in this house. So now I have to add a quarter teaspoon of salt. There. And then we'll just scrape guys and get this, um, shaped on the other counter with the dough. And I just want to recap the entire recipe because it is so easy. And remember, it only took one egg. So you can use regular flour in this if there's no need for gluten-free, but I'm doing this batch for Turner. So it's a quarter cup of butter or margarine, a quarter cup of shortening. I did a half a cup of butter. Um, one egg separated, so the yolk goes in here. Um, a half a teaspoon of vanilla, one cup of flour, one quarter teaspoon of salt, and three quarter cups of finely chopped nuts, if you're choosing to use that, and then just some jelly. So, um, what you're next going to do is just lately... Just one egg. So one egg. Wait. Sorry for all the noise. I'll do it off camera. I took 
totally forgot that I had my little whisk from Ikea so I could beat my egg whites really, really well with it. So that's awesome because it just says to lightly beat them. These are for the regular um, thumbprint cookies, not my... Um, not the gluten-free. I still have those gluten-free, but I, egg whites aren't going to matter if I mix them all together. So that's good. And then what I do is I just stick them in some water and spin it clean. There. Oh, clean. Okay, these seem to have turned out really good. Look, and it's a nice not falling apart cookie, which is wonderful for gluten-free. And I filled these ones with Turner's favorite apple jelly from our apples on our tree. And I will fill the other ones with grape jelly from the, our grapevines. And they look great, but one step I forgot to tell you guys is when you roll it in the egg white like this, then roll them in chopped nuts if you want. That's the stage where you use the nuts. So you roll them in the egg white, roll them in the nuts, put them on here, and then do your thumbprint thing. And it also says remove them immediately from the oven. It took 10 minutes for mine. I checked them at eight, didn't work. 10 minutes, perfect. And then you remove them from the oven and then immediately and fill them with the jelly. And some of my thumbprints had poof back up. So I just pressed them again really quickly. So I'm gonna do these and get these in the oven. And then I've already started the batch of the regular ones without the, I mean, the regular ones, not the gluten-free. So they're over in the bowl.